Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome in the second workshop called Automate Reinforcement in Tecla using Grasshopper. We are starting exactly in five minutes. Uh, if you can just uh, tell me if you can hear me or see me well, as always, just write on the chat. I see already 80 people uh, are coming more and more. Uh, we have uh, Ashley. Uh, hello, Ashley. Uh, yes, we are hearing Shahrokok. I hope that I pronounce it uh, correctly. Hello, we have uh, Omar. Uh, everything uh, from Brazil. Everything is fine from uh, Ivan. Um, hi, Ivan. So as I said, we are starting uh, soon. Just four minutes uh, left. Uh, take your coffee. Uh, take some water. Uh, there will be lots of uh, content here, so prepare uh, yourself with some coffee, with some water. Uh, it will be about one, one and a half hour. We'll see if there will be many questions, but I prepared, lo prepared lots of content. So soon we will start, so get, uh, get ready. Hello, Omar. Good to see you. Uh, you just uh, sent me some question on uh, on mail before this uh, workshop. Uh, I think it was with the Rhino uh, Rhino Eight. Uh, so I hope you solved it. You have to change the version of the .NET uh, there, but it's just a one click. If you still have a problem, uh, so just let me know. So maybe I can also uh, show uh, show it uh, today. So as I said, we are starting in three minutes. Uh, we have lots of Tecla users. Um, so maybe you can just write on the chat, um, how do you create reinforcement in uh, Tecla? Are you preferring using uh, rebar sets? Or maybe you are just modeling North in the standard way as a bar uh, rebar groups? Or maybe you are using already Grasshopper for that. Uh, so please just let us know. Uh, we have uh, Fernando from LinkedIn. That's good that everything is working. You can also see uh, that workshop on LinkedIn as well. And um, uh, comment from Omar. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, so everything is working. For, for those who are still struggling with uh, Tecla Live Link in the Rhino 8 uh, version, uh, so please, uh, please let me know, so I will be glad to help you. So how do you create reinforcement in Tecla? Just write on the on the chat. Are you a fan of rebar sets or maybe rebar group? Mm. Uh, let me see. Tecla Auto Dimensions is possible using Grasshopper. Uh, yeah, there is new components for dimensions. Uh, you mean like in model, in the 3D model? Uh, so there is a new components for uh, display distance. So actually, we can make the dimensions of uh, all the uh, objects. Uh, is this going to be recorded? Yes, is this going to be recorded? And I'm going to share that for everyone who will uh, register. Um, if you can just, uh, Omar, Ivan, Ashley, you are here. You can just write, what are you using to reinforce in tech like the rebar sets? So, for example, Fernando Fernando is a uh, is a rebar set uh, fan, and that's good. Uh, I have a good news at the end uh, today, so for sure you will be interested in in that. Uh, we will start soon. Let me see the clock. So just one minute, uh, one minute left, and we will start with the workshop. Take your coffee. I have my favorite cup. So here, learn Grasshopper. I have my also favorite T-shirt. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, learn Grasshopper in Tecla, and the new project is approaching. Fernando, totally, really, yeah. We'll we'll see at the end. Still, is in the developing, but soon you will see some results. Uh, Mirko here from Italy. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, sit comfortable and we'll start in just one minute exactly at 2 p.m. Central European uh, time. Uh, just let me see. I can see all your comments. So that's good. Remember that you can leave any comments uh, and I will try to answer that. 
me see i will just hide it and i'm prepared that's good okay 30 seconds left we have already 100 people live that's amazing uh, last month i spent just recording just speaking to camera recording uh, lessons so here uh, finally i have some inter interaction be between uh, audience so i'm really happy it's like i feel more endorphins like being live so i'm happy to be to be here uh, so how do you create reinforcement in tecla some of you create uh, standard rebars bar groups some of you rebar sets uh, omar uh, i will use tecla rebar in uh, bridge projects yeah maybe it's the best uh, the best choice okay let's uh, let's start we have already 2 p.m central european uh, time will not wait any uh, longer so we are live on facebook linkedin and youtube and i really will really appreciate if you can leave a like or the comment uh, on the this uh, live because it will help me to get to more audience and more people will see this workshop so maybe they will be more uh, often so if you are seeing that on youtube or linkedin or facebook just give a thumbs a thumbs up okay let's start so today workshop about one and a half uh, hour uh, we'll see if it will be 90 minutes it depends about your question uh, questions i prepared lots of content so i hope uh, that uh, that we will finish in 90 minutes and i'm really happy to see more than 120 people right now to spend the valentine's day together with me uh, so recording there was already a question uh, is this going to be recorded yes and it will be available on the platform uh, on the youtube right now but uh, maybe in the future it will disappear so if you would like to uh, watch this or just do not wait uh, until uh, it will not be available uh, longer uh, longer available for everyone who will register with this qr code on all the learngrasshopper.com slash workshop reinforcement uh, i have prepared grasshopper files there will be homework there will be also free um, uh, free grasshopper files that i'm going to present like step-by-step -step process uh, starting with the one straight rebar, going to stirrups and going to data trees. So every single Grasshopper file together with the presentation will be sent for all users tomorrow. Uh, I made it by purpose that I'm not send, I, 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 I didn't send it before because I would like that everyone will focus on the today's workshop and then and the own tempo will study it. So two benefits of joining this workshop, as I said, you can practice with hands-on assignment. And I think this is a difference between like standard webinars and this workshop. I really try to encourage uh, people who are attending to do uh, the homeworks, to do assignments and just try it because this is the best way of learning Grasshopper and using in the class structure. So yeah, so I will share the old examples and I will also show you how we can uh, do modeling of reinforcement efficiently and save hundreds of hours on the manual process because this is how it looks today. Uh, this is a really manual process. When we change one thing, then we need to adjust with all the reinforcement. Okay, so this is the this was the first uh, workshop that was uh, one month uh, before this one on the 17th of January. You can still watch it and get all the materials. Uh, I hope that you some of you are here also uh, watched uh, solved the workshop uh, deliver the assignment. I haven't checked. I will not check everything, but it was a little bit to encourage you to start with. Uh, five easy steps to start with Grasshopper and Tecla Living. Together, Valentine's Day, so we have uh, Tecla Workshop, so it's the second one. Uh, and I'm going to plan do that more often. If you have any questions about our like topics that you would like to, uh, that I would like to present, uh, that's related to Grasshopper and Tecla. So just please, uh, please let me know on the on the chat. Uh, I see Asha, Asha Beam here, so maybe something with uh, drawings. I have also Arturas, Hi Arturas, 
Um, so if you will have any idea of the future workshop, just let me know on email or just drop the comments uh, below. So we are going to plan. But today we are going to talk about reinforcement with uh, Grasshopper. For those who don't know me and see me first time, my name is Chris. Actually, it's called I'm called Krzysztof Wojsław. I'm originally Polish. I've been living in Oslo, Norway, 10 years. And two years ago, I decided to start my own company and go online, go to YouTube. I have created my own online platform for teaching Grasshopper and parametric design for all engineers. So they will can transform their work into fun with programming. And Grasshopper is an easy language to start with. And I always recommend that. So learngoshopper.com, this is my website. I have already 12,000 subscribers there that every week I'm sending new Grasshopper tips and tricks, how to start and how to master Grasshopper. I'm also academic lecturer in the, as a guest academic lecturer at the Norwegian University and at Global Master Program at Ziggurat. So I always try to share my knowledge, what I, what I know. So before we will uh, start, uh, we I will show you a little bit uh, three videos that will show you the principles of why we should automate or create reinforcement with Grasshopper. Let's start with the first one, uh, really easy, uh, about creating uh, reinforcement of the foundation. So today today's topic. So here you will see on the right side, we have the old uh, all uh, parameters that we can set, change offset, we can change the center distance between rebars. We can see it's changing for all. We can change dimension of our rebar. We can see that cover is also following. And the best part, when you are going to change uh, everything in the model, in your parametric uh, geometry, so all reinforcement will follow along. So this is... Uh, this is we are going to you are going to achieve this kind of script after this today workshop. But to next video, uh, I will show you that you can go even further, not just making simple foundation, but you can make the complicated reinforcement of the tunnel portal. So here there are principle how you can achieve longitudinal uh, rebars, how you can uh, achieve some hooks at the end, all everything in the curve because. Grasshopper is really strong with the curves and all the NERPS curves. So that's why this reinforcement will follow perfectly. So we can change the splicing clank, the place where they should uh, splice, be spliced. Uh, and for example, here, like the cover thickness. And the best part, as it was before, when you are changing the portal, so there everything is changing as well. So this is really powerful way of designing your reinforcement and the last one last example uh, that i would like to present before the workshop just to inspire you and answer the question why we should make this everything in grasshopper since it's possible in tecla uh, here is the rain run selva bridge uh, that was reinforced the whole bridge deck uh, of the cantilever part done in grasshopper so here was the aim to find the Dextera representation in Rhino. So you can see all these curves and send these curves for every single segment. You will see that we have different classes, different colors, different heights, and we can group it. So in the next, uh, next part of this video, we'll see also how the stirrups of uh, reinforcement in the walls was done. So here we find all the walls, all the thickness, and then we specify how many rebars supposed to be, what is the center distance between rebars. And then we got the native reinforcement in Tecla for the whole bridge. So do you see practical application of it at your work? Uh, I just show you three of this uh, example, like the first one with foundation, second one with the more complicated rebars that maybe it's not possible to do without using Grasshopper. Like it will be really hard. Or the third one, automation, like you don't want to repeat your work. So just uh, just uh, share your share your thoughts. And I will see the comments. I already see that one. So please, uh, in the meantime, I will answer the question right in the chat. If you are watching on LinkedIn or YouTube, so do you see the practical application uh, of 
um, modeling reinforcement through Grasshopper. Regarding future webinars, maybe some uh, example project to make a reinforcement for each type of element. So today is a workshop for that. We are going to make a foundation. So uh, Riglo, if you can write what else, maybe some particular case you are interested, today we are going to reinforce the foundation. Uh, here, the India germ, uh, since Rhino Grasshopper is not beam based, does Tecla solve this or do we have to use Rhino inside Revin to export IFC? Uh, good question. Uh, actually, you can export IFC directly from Revit. There is plenty of uh, plugins for that. Uh, for example, the endpoints. Uh, today, Andre just uh, released the uh, plugin that I think is still uh, for free to download endpoints. But you have also Visual uh, Arc. You have also Geometry Gym. So you don't have to export it to Revit, no. Hello, Nuno. Hello, Album. Uh, definitely Einar three scenarios, so that, that's good. Uh, it could save lots of time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, th this is why we are using this automation. Uh, more examples, uh, footing foundation for overpasses. Yeah, this can be interesting. Just send me uh, Maxim, maybe give me an email. Maybe you can just send me a form. So maybe we can also take a look. Uh, perfect. OK, so let's start with uh, going through uh, components that can create uh, reinforcement. Uh, thanks for all your all of your comments. Okay, so first one is a single uh, create a single bar. So it's a called rebar. We need in as the input we need the part. We need the shape, attributes, hook, and curver. As we modeled manually re reinforcement uh, in Tecla, we first need to click on the our shape, our beam, or our column. Then we choose the shape, and then we can change all the attributes on the right side. By the first here, that to note, as a general rule, try to create rebar groups. So here is a, a just single rebar. Uh, I prefer personally uh, to use rebar group and use just was a, without any center distance, just a one element, because it's is it's performed it's just performed better and uh, this is always my recommendation and it's easier to work with downstream i will also show you afterwards what what i mean with that but if uh, my my first recommendation try to not use the single rebar okay so that was the the first thing the second thing that you can uh, choose the reinforcement uh, grade from the catalog so there is a component called reinforcement catalog if you right click you can just pick uh, from the catalog and you will it will appear the catalog from your tecla model so there you can change the attribute size and grade you can also set up for bending radius and all the files that i'm going to create uh, they are used for default environment so maybe if you will see like here on the on the top uh, I'm not sure if you see my mouse. Yeah, you can see my mouse. Uh, here, if you will see that that this reinforcement is just uh, small lines, like in really thin lines, so most probably there you are not, you are having different grades. So just coming back to the previous one, be sure that you are using the grades of the rebars that you are having in your Tecla environment. Next one. Next one is a rebar attributes. We can set up here the name of the rebar. We can set up for the size, grade. Uh, this can be also done with just one component. We have the radius of the bending. Uh, it depends if it's a, if it's a stirrup or is it a straight bar. Uh, we have class, prefix, stand number, face, and user defined attributes. So you can see all these attributes can be set up through uh, grasshopper and it's really convenient and it also can be set up as a text input so here is a syntax example of the syntax that for example you can just give it in the if you know the rules of the syntax of the rebars so actually you can just cr create name and in the quotes uh, just write the name of the reinforcement next size and the grade so you don't actually don't have to always use this uh, component attribute if you know the syntax. So you can also achieve that with uh, panel. 
and maybe it can also save you some place because this component is can be quite huge to place on your grasshopper script all right next one is hooks uh, we have actually two uh, component it's a uh, one hook that will be the same hooks at the uh, at the same uh, at the same end uh, and will generate with the shape angle the radius and the length that we will specify here is a uh, one note uh, let me see uh, that uh, I will make it bigger uh, so you can see it better. The direction of the hook is defined by rebar plane. And I will I will also show you what I, what I mean by rebar plane, especially it maybe can be confusing why where we have just straight rebar, how to find this rebar plane to place the hook in the right position. So we will also I show you I will show you some exercise how to change the hook uh, position, hook, uh, let's say, angle. All right, next one is uh, uh, another, which is called hooks, where we can almost similar, but the thing, the difference is that we can change the hooks, uh, that different hooks will be on the different ends. That's why we have the four inputs for shape and start, and we have four inputs for the end of the rebar. And one of the last uh, components that uh, I will uh, will show you, it's a cover uh, where we can set up on on plane, from plane, start end, and start type and end type. Uh, we'll see also that this is everything the same, which is in Tecla, where we're going to attributes. Maybe I can already, yeah, we'll go that and I will show you that it's almost the same, like the following all the, uh, attributes. Okay, so as I said, maybe we are not, I'm not the biggest fan of the single bar, but I'm a big fan of the rebar group. And with this component, we you can create all the types of the reinforcement that you would like to model. So for example, you can create normal, you can create tapered, you can create tapered uh, ridge, uh, you can also create tapered curve distribution tapered end, you can decide how many uh, parts of the end, how many tapered shapes it will be defined. You can, I don't know, I think there is no limitation, but you can, for example, go to 99. I don't know if it's the best way to model. Uh, and you can also make a spiral reinforcement. And everything is um, changed by the two inputs, shape and range. If you have a grafted, if you have a flattened input, if it's a in circular form or if it's a, if it, it is a arc, so it will be different. The same, the combination with no range at all and no input at all without any flatten, uh, if there will be a circle, if it will be the arc. So this combination will give you different rebar types. And the last, uh, Rein, uh, reinforcement input that I would like to show, it's a group. It's the last one or when we are seeing our rebar group. And here we can specify the different spacing type. So for example, we have uh, on the left side, we can see that is an exact spacing. We have exact number of rebars. So we will going to have a range and we'll specify the number in this range. Next, we have the, the target space and four different flex uh, distribution, uh, flexible at the start, flexible at the end, flexible on the both sides, and flexible at the middle. The same is uh, with the exclusion uh, exclude type. We can just exclude the first, last one, and both. If the spiral input we can is just a boolean value so we can set up set up on true or false so if we are model modeling like circular like a circular rebars if we are just going to change that for false or true so it will change uh, the type all right so now we'll first with the first distribution normal distribution i have an example here, a reinforcement that was modeled through Grasshopper. And on the left side, on the bottom, uh, you, okay, maybe you cannot see that. Let's see, here. Uh, here we have the rebar group component, and we have two inputs, shape and range. 
to in order to create a normal distribution we need to give the shape as a line like curve or and the range in the line like curve in this particular example and if we if we look on the right corner here we'll see also that we will have different points uh, i mark that mark that as a by purpose that is the shape so here we have the start point and the end point and we have the range from zero to one. Remember, just the order in Grasshopper really matters from which point line starts. Sometimes we have to flip it. All right, so let's go to Tecla. I will see uh, some comments, if there's any comments. Uh, we have some uh, already maybe show. Can you create rebar sets from Grasshopper? Yes, actually you can from the newest edition. I will show you. Um, Wojciech, uh, is there possible to reinforce items? I mean, not only concrete slabs, beam, etc. Of course, of course, Wojciech, uh, it's possible to model all the items, all the form that you can imagine is possible to do. I think that there's no uh, limitation about that. Uh, let me see, I will mark. So uh, I will mark some uh, questions so I can answer that uh, afterwards. All right, so let's open a Grasshopper and Tecla. Uh, let's uh, let's create uh, some plate. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen right. Yeah, you can see my screen. I will make it bigger so you can see it. Uh, let's model uh, one plate uh, set on Tecla, uh, Tecla line. So we will model uh, this plate. Remember that the uh, order of defining the plate will matter. So this one. Uh, this one will be the same position of our curves. Uh, let me see, I will create a plate. Uh, let's uh, create a boundary. Uh, great, it was created, maybe a little bit bigger, so profile, let's change it to 500 so we can see it and maybe position uh, so it will be placed in the middle. So let's uh, make a reinforcement uh, on that. So let's make a position, cool. Let's start with uh, that. And let's maybe start um, doing that manually. Of course, if you are a Tecla user, you know that is a bar group. And first, what we are need, need to do, uh, let me see, I will just hide this comment. Uh, I will click on the first. We have to specify what, where, who will be the father, if I can, uh, if I can tell uh, that, one, in that, that way. And then I am going to pick the shape of the bar. So let's pick the shape of the bar. So I'm going to click from one point to another. And then I'm going to confirm with the middle mouse button. And then I'm going to indicate the range. So here to the second one. All right. So now I have created the reinforcement. I have some hooks uh, as, a, as a standard. It can, be, it can be like that. OK. But I would like to create that uh, aut automatically in Grasshopper. So uh, let's uh, go to this plate. Let's deconstruct plate, plate, plate deconstruct. So we can get all the boundary. So let me see, there's extract uh, and deconstruct plate. So I can get the same boundary here uh, as our polyline curve. I will take a closer look and we will have a curve. So this curve is closed. So this is one polyline curve. We are going to explode that. Uh, we are going to explode this component and we are going to pick exact the same way as we are picking the line, like the first point to the second point and the same from the this point to the another point. We can take the segments. Uh, we can um, maybe first I will show you that we can also uh, visualize that what number is the uh, point list. So I can show you that what number is particular uh, curve. So let's change the, the size. Let me see, it's not that big, maybe thousand. Okay, so I can see. Okay, so to create reinforcement, I need the curve, uh, first curve uh, as a, with the index one and with the index zero. All right, so now I will go to rebar group. I need to create a rebar group. I need to have a part. So I'm going to use that plate. I'm going to need to 
Uh, I will not use that Grafton. Uh, you will see that it's as a default, but in this case, we are creating just normal reinforcement, just keep it as a flatten. And here we are going to use as a, our shape. So it will be the second item. So let me see. So let's take us with the curve so we can connect that. So we, it's a green. Okay, we can see the green. We can also, it's really wise uh, as, as well to check the uh, the endpoints of this, uh, re, uh, this curve. So if we're going to check where is the start of the point, so we can visualize that, that this is a start, this is an end. So the same as I, as I did that manually. So this is a right curve. So this, let's connect that to shape. Okay, we can see already that we have something and you will see that we have Okay, the shape of the rebar is great, but it's going upwards really, really long. This is the reason why, because we do not have a range. And our range is a line zero with the index zero. So let's take the second line. Let's as well check if we have the endpoint, just to be clear that we are starting in the correct way. So let's create with the point. So here is the start and here's the end. We can do that but we can also flip that so it will be different. So we can flip that and we will going to have the same reinforcement. So let's take a look. So it's that same reinforcement created um, uh, automatically in Tecla. And now we have some cover so we can play a little bit uh, just with the on plane, let's say 75. Uh, and we can play maybe with the group group attributes so let's connect that and spacing let's uh, create maybe 150 and so on so we can change that so pretty cool so this is the easiest way of doing the normal reinforcement uh, just let me know if you have any questions in the mean line i will answer that um, okay i will take the water so this is the reinforcement like the standard way of doing normal reinforcement the next one we can create a tapered tapered reinforcement so let's come back to our representation and we have in this case uh, we have our tapered form what does it mean tapered form that we are starting with the one size and going to a bigger size so we can see that it's uh, the length is changing it's increasing so every single rebar is longer okay so this is the type this is a tapered group and you will see that in this case we are not having any range okay so range if we are going if we would like to create a tapered group we are not connecting range but we are going to connect shape from which shape should be starting and what should be ending and then Tecla will find all the uh, will create a tapered group with the, all the reinforcement that is changing along the way. So let's try. Uh, so let's try to do that uh, for the same. Let's use the same particular case and uh, let me see. So here we are going to connect, create, uh, use the line number four, and we have to create the uh the the line between these two points or maybe we can also just to create like do tapered from this line number four to number one okay so let's uh let's do that i will uh copy uh, the script so we are going to use uh, the same uh, exploded but we are going to use just uh, z uh, one and four so let's go to the next one okay so our uh, first shape, uh, it will be um, one. So let's create that one. And the last one will be four. I will just show you with the green. So we have one on the one side and one on the other side. So this is what uh, we would like to connect. Uh, as I said before, we don't want to have a range. So we are going to disconnect that. Uh, just, just hold our control uh, button. And now we have to connect the second shape. So we are starting from that one and going to the second one. And here again, there is really important the order. 
I will show you that without flipping the curve, what will happen. So let's create, let's connect that with holding the shift. We can connect to uh, two lines. We can also do it with the merge uh, so we can see it. First one and the second one. And let's connect that line like curve. And let's go to Tecla and see what we are having right here, right here. We can just click on the previous one, go delete this object in Tecla. And you can see that we have really strange like a, um, through triangles. And the, he the thing is here, you can see it's clearly with the colors. So we can still start and the end here and here start and the end. So suddenly it will flip. So that's why we have to always check the direction of our curve. And that's why one of the curves has to be flipped. So we are going to flip it and voila, we have the tapered reinforcement that is changing from one edge to the next one. So, so this was tapered. And the third one that I would like to present on this foundation uh, is uh, tapered N. So here we will provide many different shapes. This is the shapes that we are going to define as a line and without the range. So there will be more than two elements in this order. We will create the tapered end. Let's go to Tecla. Let's go to our grasshopper. So we can take, uh, we will take one of the points. So we will visualize uh, the points. So we can make the visual, uh, have a uh, projection of this point, point number three into the line number zero. So let's uh, curve point, closest point, curve closest point. Yes, here we have. It. So the, there will be point number three. So let's go with the index three. We have correct point and we are going to use that on the curve zero. So this is the curve and voila, we are going to create the second point. So in this way, we can create a line between these two points. So between number three and uh, projected one. So here looks really good. And in addition to the previous one, so we have the first one. So now it will be the second one and the third one. So we are going to uh, create, connect that into the middle of our merge. So I'm not sure about the uh, all the direction. Uh, so let me check if everything is working. And yeah, we are lucky. So every single rebar is uh, with the same uh, same uh, direction. So now we can see that we have all the shapes and the tapered. So it's called tapered N. Uh, okay, okay, uh, it's even uh, tapered ridge. Okay, because it's a uh, free. If we are going to add more, so it will be tapered N, but it's it's still the same because they are, this one is the same uh, as the second one. All right, so this was the really uh, small and uh, practical example of the foundation. So we will go now to a little bit more advanced stuff as, for example, creation the hooks and the direction of the hooks, especially it can be really confusing um, for creating a hooks when we have the straight bar because the plane is really important. So I will co come back to the previous example. Let's start, let's go to Tecla as well. I will delete, mm, I will come back to this rebar, mm, just double click on that one. So I will see the reinforcement and let's create also hooks. Uh, hook attributes, so they will be the same of both sides, hooks, uh, shape, let's create 90 degrees. Okay, this is created in this way. But let's imagine a situation that we would like to change that in this direction, how we can do that. Uh, if we would like to change the angle, so it will be just the angle of the hook. And the thing is that if we are modeling the hook right now, so the plane is defined by all the endpoints. So the plane is defined as here, straight above. If you, we would like to change that, the orientation of the hook, we also need to change the orientation of the rebar. So it will be in the, in the plane. And here is a trick that I think you will, uh, you will like. Uh, let me see, I will uh, just uh, hide it for a little bit so you will not see it. 
But the trick is that to add for these two curves, so let me see, I will just put it, I will merge that. So we have one curve and we have second curve. Uh, just a shape, let me see. I need just a shape. So this is a shape of our curve. Perfect. Uh, I will just uh, disable that so we are not seeing. I'm going to input in the middle extra point. Okay. I know that this will be a still straight bar, but we are going to uh, cheat a little bit here. So we are going to that middle point. Uh, we will take also endpoints of that one. So here we have both ends, uh, start and the end. You can see right here, we have the middle point. And this middle point, we can just move a little bit. Uh, we are talking about like just some millimeters. So let's say that we are going to move in the up direction, okay? In the Z direction. If we're going to move Z direction, couple of millimeters, it's still going to be a straight reverse. We are not going to create a new shape. So let's uh, move that, move. Uh, middle point in the z direction. We can try uh, with the z uh, direction. Uh, so it will be this plane. If we are like to move in the another direction, so maybe in the x direction. So if we like to see the difference, so maybe you need x. Uh, just move it, uh, just maybe two millimeters, I think should be fine. Uh, maybe I will zoom these two points. Okay, so now you can see uh, that maybe two millimeters is too big. Yeah, one millimeter, it's okay. So we have like this situation, the like, two points. And now let's connect uh, these three points, like this one, which is moved uh, on the plane. So for that, we can use interpolate curve. Uh, let's start, use as our start. Let's use our moved points and on the end points. You can see here that it's uh, uh, it's going Good, so we can have a curve. And now let's try with this shape uh, to connect that. Let's create the curve and you will see we have changed the hook position. So we have cheated a little bit and it's really amazing stuff. If you have hundreds of rebars that you would like to change, you can make it in the automatic way. Uh, just let me know if you knew that trick uh, about uh, creating reinforcement. So we can see that this rebar, it's it was created by uh, three points, but it's still a single point. Just let me know if you knew that, that you can orient your hooks for the straight rebars in this way. Uh, in the meantime, I will check. Uh, hello, Polar, amazing one, excellent explanation and simple, just love it, thank you. Uh, Carlos, what if you wanted to put reinforcement on the sides of that plate? Yeah, this is not a problem. Uh, you can, uh, uh, you have the thickness of the uh, of the slab, so you can just move the uh, line for the curve to get the, this this curve. So actually, you can in the same way you can model that. We are going to make a foundation, so uh, I will show you that one as well. Uh, other, uh, another way of doing that, you can also get a convert uh, B wrap, convert to B wrap. So let's take our plate. So we can also have a, uh, our B wrap and get all the edges. So this is also Carlos, one way to, to get this. Uh, it's something new to you, that's good. Uh, we are here to learn new things, mm, Ayesha. Can you alternate and stagger the reinforcement like in slabs? And uh, and how do you do the curtailment of reinforcement, like for example, in beams and uh, slabs? Um, yeah, we can stagger reinforcement. Uh, I will also maybe show you the one of the example that you can also group it into in different uh, in different ways. So for example, just three uh, rebars with the same uh, length, next three rebars for different lengths and so on. Uh, my architect has provided a free DM file of a ground floor uh, arches. I can see that arches are not possible to model in natively in Tecla. That's oh, almost correct. What would be the best workflow for me to use? So like, if you are using arches for me, is a no-brainer. I always use Grasshopper. You can also create your reinforcement as a arches. 
Uh, so yeah, just go with Grasshopper and for sure 3DM file is a Rhino open file, so it will be with no problems. Uh, have to go. Uh, we'll see the video tomorrow. Uh, it's all looking good. A quick request, uh, reinforce a ring wall, annual, annual reinforcement for tanks, and place rebel split uh, staggered. Yeah, that is possible. I have the one of the example of that one. Um, how it's different than Tecla custom components? They are all parametric. Why reinvent the wheel? Um, because the custom component, tech like custom components, uh, if you are a programmer, so you can create your own uh, your own components. But here, I will show you that examples that you can automate it in your own way. Sometimes you have really different examples, different use cases that can be really difficult uh, to model that with the custom components. And now, and sometimes when creating a stir up uh, other than rectangular shape, for example, trapezoid shape, then it gives uh, unknown shape. So in this case, shall I go de define the shape in Tecla manually? No, you can uh, define your uh, rebar in uh, Grasshopper and then go to rebar scheduler and then adjust it. If it's, it's not finding uh, the shape that you have defined, so maybe it's some mistake. But in most cases, you have to define in the rebar scheduler a new shape. Is it possible to model longitudinal rebars as rebar group when we have a curved shape? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, James. Good question. Uh, if we have a long slab, long uh, bridge deck, and we have like curve, so it depends actually of how many points of distribution you will have. Then Tecla will not. Uh, get it and uh, this is an angle so there is some uh, tolerances about the angle between first and the second point and if the, this angle will be small the cloud will know that is a, a normal straight bar even though in tecla is um, um, curved but everything is about tolerances uh, these tolerances can be set up uh, sorry uh, if we go to uh, file and if you go to editor, a rebar shape manager, I will just show you, click quickly, James. So here you have tolerances. Uh, so in this case, you have also radius, angle, and dimension. So here you can set up where Tecla will recognize uh, where uh, is the zero shape or is the curve shape. OK, last question. Uh, and we go further. Um, the rebar export tool does not allow us to export tapered range. Okay, uh, so can we just make the tapered to normal to get it uh, exported for fabrication? Uh, we can try. Uh, let me see. Uh, just uh, just model this previous reinforcement. Uh, uh, let me so, uh, show only selected. So we have this tapered uh, bar. Uh, let me see. I'm not sure uh, right now. Let's see. Uh, if we have the tape red right now, what will happen if we are going to change to normal? OK, so it will change to normal uh, both of the way, and they will be the uh, the same. So if the program is not the tape red, so I'm not, uh, I'm not sure how you model, uh, model the reinforcement that is changing in the, in the shape. All right, so let's go to first case study that we are going to make the reinforcement uh, of the foundation. So let's go to our normal reinforcement. Here, this example, you will get this example uh, from me uh, tomorrow. So you can, you can test it. Let's, uh, let's keep it. Uh, we have a beam. Uh, let's, uh, let's model this beam. Uh, this is something where happening. We are not seeing the profile. Let me see. Maybe I have to create one more time. Uh, zoom. Let's see. Uh, zoom into Tecla object. Something is uh, thinking. Uh, I think it's creating a profile. Let me see. The beam. OK, we have the our beam. All right. So I have uh, our beam. This is our foundation. And this foundation we are going to deconstruct. As I showed, we have converted uh, into BRAP. So we have converted. It can be also created manually in Tecla. So we're converting that in the solid item in Rhino. Then we can deconstruct all the 
uh, all the edges. And with some automation, we can uh, we can uh, find the dot product of every single curve. So if there will be one or minus one, so it will be perpendicular, or if it will be zero, so it will be in the same, uh, sorry, one and minus one, so it will be in the same direction, zero, it will be perpendicular. So if we are checking that dot values, so we will see that some of them are minus one, some of them are one, some of them something between, so they are in the with the slopes. So if we are going to use similarity to one, so we can dispatch that for everything which is in the longitudinal direction and everything which is in the vertical direction. So this is a really cool way, instead of doing that manually, just choosing, okay, this one and this one, so we can check for some of the uh, rules uh, to find vertical and horizontal reinforcement. All right, so now we can find the order of the uh, of the rebars, so we can also, it will be easier to follow. Uh, so here we have order of edge, uh, display order edges in Rhino. So we have all uh, longitudinal bars. So we have from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can list it and see it in our Rhino. The same with the remote receiver, we can get the cross and get the correct line number. And this is one of the way, of course, if you would like to have more automated way, so you can search for which is placed in the bottom, which is the shortest, which is a perpendicular direction, it's everything, it depends on you. Uh, because maybe in the, some cases, uh, you would like to have a grasshopper script that works for every single foundation. Okay, I will take a little bit of coffee, see if um, many questions. Um, may we have these files? Yeah, you will get these files if you have registered but you will get that tomorrow. Uh, have you tried to tackle drawing after cre creating the rebars? Will the drawing get affected if we move the concrete geometry to a new location? Yeah, if you are creating that with this method, it's the same way as you create new reinforcement. So there is no difference at all. I never experienced a problem with reinforcement. It's just a rebar group. So this is not a problem. Uh, okay, uh, so let's uh, let's create uh, some parts of reinforcement. So here I know that I would like to have longitudinal reinforcement, and next one is the uh, range of the reinforcement. So it will be this shape and in this range. So I can just send it to Tecla. Uh, let me see a zoom object. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing the create a view. Okay, I can see uh, right now, uh, here on the top, I can maybe delete every, everything that I have in the uh, delete alt object in Tecla. This means that I will delete all of the uh, reinforcement in, uh, in that one. So let's uh, start again. Uh, I will disable, so let's start reinforcement and all the rebars. All right, so that was uh, also a question about uh, how to model reinforcement on the edges. Uh, so here is the example that we have the reinforcement uh, on the edge here. And th this is just a matter of finding a correct shape. So in this case, this is the shape. And we have to create also the range. So let me see, I will just show it. So this is the range here and we have also a shape so here you will see that we have the uh, this position uh, maybe the that it's not that correct let me see uh, maybe i will show this example and coming with that one okay so this will this will be a uh, correct so we have actually our shape of our reinforcement this is our edge how we defined and there we have a vertical line that is giving us a, a range. So in this case, we have created reinforcement. What else? Uh, we can, for example, create also stirrups. So in this case, uh, let me create, we have also some ranges here. Uh, we can uh, create a specific shape and the range. So let's look at the correct shape. 
in this case, we have created a kind of U-shape uh, rebar. This is our shape. There are three lines connected into each other. So we have joint curves. We have correct connected all them together. And the range is here. So it will be in the long little dark direction. So as, as, a, as a result, we will get U-shape rebar. So here is our rebar. Looks good. Perfect. I really like it. Next one, uh, it's uh, on the top uh, rebar. So I will activate everything. Uh, maybe I will also with attributes. OK, it's OK. We can keep it like that. Uh, just a show only selected so we can see the rebar. So here we have two rebars, actually, in this case. We have one rebar going in this direction, one in the this direction. We can also model one in the uh, in the splice, but we can also connect them. So if this this everything depends how we would like to structure uh, our data. Here we can just connect two lines. We can connect or four lines, or even just two lines in the middle. And the last one, uh, cross reinforcement. So it's on the side. Again, the same principle. We are create, finding a correct shape, and then we are uh, giving the range. And let me see some question. Have you have to go? We'll catch up with the recordings for the organization. No problem, guy. Hi, I'm now working uh, rebar modeler, Tecla structure. I'm facing issue is if I am working rebar set after doing a drawing. Am I facing group issues? Oh, I think it will be hard to exp uh, see that. Uh, I'm not. It's me. You have to maybe send email to me, so I need to check uh, this out. Uh, can you create custom Python C# -sharp components instead Grasshopper using Tecla Live Link uh, namespace? Can you create custom Python C# -sharp components inside Grasshopper using Tecla uh, Live Link? Uh, you can uh, create everything like if we are going going to use Python script so you can create so you can do whatever you would like to but this data have to be sent here with the uh, to our components but you can create with c sharp the tecla api is uh, in the .NET, so you can with the c sharp so actually you can create your own components and you don't have to worry about grasshopper at all so yeah you can just with c sharp you can create whatever you like to um hi chris how do you put images in grasshopper canvas like that yeah that's a good question uh this is this one is just uh i exported the drawing uh from uh, 3d view from tecla into 3d dvg so i just got a 3d DV, dvg and then uh, i send it to i can just send send to rhino so you can see I don't know if I'm going to see that. Let me see. Uh, zero, zero, zero. OK, maybe I can see. Yeah, we can see. So you can see this is uh, just a lines uh, in uh, in Tecla. So you can in grass, in, sorry, in Rhino. So actually, if you are good in that, so you can just make your own drawing and send it. So you can see here, it's also a, a kind of shape. That is for visualizing. And I always recommend to create that because when you are creating thousands of reinforcement, this kind of, or markering the shape with the long uh, one color, especially for the script that are going to reuse. So I really recommend to creating that. So if you are, for example, if you would like to create something, uh, let's say uh, some rebar, uh, let's say here on this side. So let's create this kind of bar, rebar. And now we are going to create a sketch. And now we are going to load from Rhino. And you will see that we have this kind of rebar uh, inside. So yeah, this is not, it's not uh, magic. Uh, everything is done in Rhino, so you can do the same. Mm -hmm. We are asked to produce clash-free rebars. We use direct model for this. Can these groups be edited with direct model, that one that generates from Grasshopper? Yes. Uh, this is a really good question. I like. I really like your questions. They are really uh, specific one. 
So let's uh, let's start maybe with that one. Mm, I will uh, I will show you in the meantime. Rebar creation. We have a C sharp script uh, for that. So I can copy. You will also get access to this one. So when we are going to connect that, we can get all rebars polygons. So let me see. Uh, I can go to zoom it. Go to perspective. So I have created all the rebars. So everything, uh, every single uh, rebar now, it's as a, uh, as you can see here, uh, is as a line. Now we can also just make a wand to make it really quick. We can use kind of pipe uh, component with the, our curve. Uh, here we have the polygon and let's radius, let's say 10. Uh, sorry, radius 10. And now we can just zoom it here. So we'll see that we have the shape of, okay. And now we can uh, maybe just create one of them and maybe we can also check if there's some collision uh, between one and the second group. I'm not sure if there will be. Okay, we can see something. I'm not sure. I think they are not in the collision, but we can check. And there is a cool component called clash. So we can connect first set and the second set. Uh, it will take, I, I just hope that it will not crash uh, for just uh, showing this, uh, this component. Ah, maybe uh, it was wrong, but yeah, definitely. You can uh, connect the clashes and your mark with the points uh, or with the uh, with the some uh, reinforcement like from some balls around it, so we can check check the clashes. Uh, just one note that in the uh, rebars um, in the um, clashes we are connecting surfaces, so we can just connect the surfaces. Okay, so Grasshopper is still thinking, so I will answer more of your uh, questions. Uh, let me see. So yeah, definitely, uh, Craig, it's possible to check the clashes and send it and mark it with an, even with the big ball, with the big uh, beam that here is a clash of the small ones, or maybe just uh, check the number of clashes. Um, let me see, here's a question. Uh, Jesus. Hello, Chris. When I create the rebars from Grasshopper, it's impossible uh, for me to introduce the exact range by exact spacing. Okay, Tecla doesn't give me the same spacing that I provide. Is it normal? Uh, yeah, you have to provide that in different form. So I will show you that. I will just put it on the list. Uh, so it's a group distribution. Okay, uh, I will check. I'm just worried. Okay, uh, clash. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, there's the lots of open B wraps. Okay, I will not. I will try not to uh, show this clash detector, but you can try it on your own uh, with that one. Uh, I I'm just worried that I have some data structure, uh, but yeah, just go uh, for this clash. Uh, question about the reinforcement and the group spacing. Uh, so let's use that one as our example. So I will explain that to Hesus. Uh, let's create this reinforcement. Mm, let me see. Uh, okay, I have still connected that to Clash. I need to disable uh, disable that. Uh, so just uh, before it will uh, run uh, to group uh, component, maybe I can just show come back to the previous one, yeah, we are here. Uh, when you are connecting the uh, exact spacing, so when you are taping sp exact spacing, so exact uh, uh, spacing is a number one, and after what you will give the spacing. Actually, there is a syntax that you will get to repeat your data. So there will be, if it is 200 uh, times, let's say 20, so you give to give 20 times 200 to get the same list. You cannot just give the same syntax as in the Texla, Texla like as four times 200. It will not work. You have to duplicate the data and connect that. Uh, I will uh, just, uh, just wait a second so I will show you. Uh, let me see. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, I try to do my best. It's already one hour, so still we have one, uh, half hour now to go. Let me see this one we had seen. Okay, 
Uh, how can we add libraries, Tecla uh, structures to C sharp screen in Grasshopper? In Rhino 8, there is not manage assemblies. Hmm. Is that true? I'm using uh, Rhino uh, 7, um, Aksana, but it's really interesting if you cannot get the. Uh, okay, I will, uh, I will disable that. So we can uh, see it. Just the question, manage assemblies. So here we can add the version, but you are saying, Aksana, that you cannot do it in Rhino 8. Hmm. Maybe it's something that can be implemented in the ne next uh, release uh, update of the Rhino 8, but I have to, I have to check this out, uh, C-sharp component. Uh, coming back to the previous, sorry, I was like a little bit with this, um, uh, components. So now I can create the reinforcement uh, of, uh, let's say, create here and the uh, mm, group. Group attributes, if we are going to uh, spacing type, spacing type, uh, here uh, one tip, uh, if you go to auto value, auto value list, so we can just connect a spacing type uh, and it will find all the possible special types, so exact spacing. And now we have to, let's say 200, as it's our uh, data, we are going to duplicate this data. So this is duplicate data number, and let's say that we would like to have 10 times 200. So you will see that it's a list of uh, 200. Let's connect to spacing. And in this way, you will create exact spacing, okay? So this was an uh, answer for your question. So like 10 times 200. And if we like to add more, let's say a merge a component, let's add a hundred at the end. And then again, uh, 10 times 20, let's connect that. So in this way, just double click. So in this way, you will see uh, the, this, the distribution. Let me see if there's correct. Okay, it's uh, have to be flattened uh, to have the same structure here. Just double click. Yes, 10 times 200, we have 100 space and 200. I hope uh, it's helped. Aksana, I will check that with the C sharp. Let me see. Um, so yeah, with these images, so we uh, solve that namespace, okay. Uh, can I create the reinforcement with the same workflow using Rhino inside Revit in Revit Direct? Uh, unfortunately, there is a different API and a different uh, attributes, but the, in principle, uh, it's supposed to be the same, uh, but no, no, just one-to-one. Honor, -one. Uh, uh, how to break reinforcement longer than 12 meters? Uh, yeah, so if you are having reinforced like a curve, uh, that is uh, more than 12 meters. So you can just uh, divide the curve, divide uh, divide the, by the length. So you can specify that you would like to divide re this re line into 12 meter segments, and then we just connect it as a group to Tecla structure with Grasshopper. So in this way, you can just splice it. Um, how would you model the reinforcement of a tunnel section using Grasshopper? The same principles. I already showed that in the video. I maybe just a quick uh, recap uh, for you. Maybe you haven't seen. Here we are finding, this is the tunnel uh, reinforcement. So we are finding the direct shapes, the same shapes that we are going to model. And in this way, we can distribute them on the arches. So the same the same princip principles here as well. All right, let's go to another case study. Mm, this time uh, I will show you also data trees. Uh, here we have a tie reinforcement. We we are going to create uh, the data tree, uh, and the, with the one component we are going to create four rebars because it's cool to show just okay you can create with one uh, component one rebar but the whole magic happen when you can create, use data trees in the proper way. So let's uh, create that. Let's uh, ex uh, open our new example, mm, data trees. So we have similar uh, example like from before. 
I'm going to just activate my profile and uh, just go to just delete uh, everything here. Uh, so I can again uh, activate that. And same principles here, we have the long litudal and cross rebars. And then here is the magic. Magic is here to group reinforcement in the data tree structure. So we have the first of the shape of the rebar, we have the second corner, we have the third corner, and we have the fourth corner. So everything is grouped in the data tree structure. Some param, viewer. So you will see here that we are having four branches. So four different reinforcement. And this is what we are going to provide into our rebar group, our data tree structure. Four rebars, four data trees. And next is to do the same, but in the flatten list with the range. So this is the range for the first rebar. Okay, so we have the corner reinforcement and then we have the one rebar like range. The same second with the second one, third with the third and fourth with the fourth. And at the end, we are getting the uh, our uh, corner reinforcement. So you will see that we have just one rebar group, but we are creating four groups at the same time. And this is amazing because if you have five foundation, so even you can, with one component, you can even create five times four reinforcements, so 20 reinforcement of the, at the same time. So this is the, you can see on this image here that we are creating the corner reinforcement. This is really an example that you should see and go through and check it uh, how it, it is done. You will see that there is just one data tree connected the shape and the rest is flattened. And this is the principle how we model uh, reinforcement with data trees. Hmm. Uh, cool uh, question. If we model a frame bridge with a wing walls, how do we account for the change in the angle of bridge and the change in the angle of wings wall? Do everything stay parametric? Yeah, everything can stay parametric. So there are a few components that you can make a vector, uh, let's say angle. So we can measure the angle between the frame, like an abutment and the wings, and you can specify uh, specify that the same with reinforcement. If something is changing, you can also make these changes when you are picking correct curve. So yeah, this is no, not a big deal. Andres, the biggest challenge I have noticed is to eliminate unwanted curve points, converting Tecla geometry into to Rhino. How to deal with unwanted points when defining a curve? Uh, you have surface cut uh, on flaps. Uh, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, maybe I should uh, open uh, the, uh, the file with the curved reinforcement. I may just wait a second, so I will uh, open that. Uh, and of course, you can model also everything uh, that is in the curve. So let me see, I will go for the rebar group and the curved bars. So let's open one of the lessons uh, that I have created. And uh, let me see which one it will be the best to show you. Uh, let me see, maybe this one, I will create that one and let's select that, zoom in uh, Tecla and create uh, create a view, create a view. Okay, so here we have the reinforcement of the uh, silo uh, here as the uh, our rebar. And we have, you can see that this is a circular reinforcement. And we have created that cir circular reinforcement with just three points uh, because we know that is circular. And the thing is here, the, the clue, I will show you the same under this example with the tunnel reinforcement. The clue is to change our curve into, let me see, I will just uh, show this example. Uh, zoom selected and create a view. So uh, let me see, hide, create a view, 3D view, perfect. So now you will see that the thing with the reinforcement is to when we are providing our segments. Uh, for for example, in this case, we have a, as a as an input closed planar curve, 
And if you would like to play with the arches, here is the thing. Here you have to define your arches that will be actual actual arches in Rhino. So you will see that I have, even though it this one was defined as an arc-like curve, this is not the best arc you can get in Rhino. This is like just, just based on the geometry. So I deconstructed this arc. I will show maybe all the components. Uh, ah, you cannot see right now. Let me see display with the sunglasses. Okay, so I have deconstructed the arc and I constructed it again. So you will see at the end, I will get the arc with the, all the attributes. And this is really important. When you have some problems with too many points in the arc, if the arc is constant, so you're supposed to change this arc before connecting to shape. The second thing is that you can also rebuild the curve, Andres. Uh, in this example, we have the reinforcement as you can see with many points, but we can also rebuild these points before. So we can see that distribution will change. This is the one thing when you are rebuilding the two curves. And the second thing we are also can distribute this thing of the maximum point control points. So for example, you can get 25 and you can get 35. You can just play with it. You can just also play with tolerances. So this is the way how you can play and distribute these rebars. And as I said before, uh, you can find, uh, maybe in this will be two, or maybe if you put many points here, Tecla in, uh, maybe can recognize this as a, a straight rebar. So it's always the, the matter of how these points are distributed along the way. Next question. Okay. Uh, hi, Martin. How can we edit existing in Tecla reinforcement? For example, get all rebars in model, group them in some way and edit shape for just pointed group. Yeah, good one. Uh, so let's let's maybe play a little bit. Oh, sorry, I hope not going outside. Yeah, no, everything is correct. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, good question. Uh, let's modify. We have the new rebar tab with the modify and we can modify rebar group. So let's uh, create that one. And we can just take the rebar that we have modeled here. So we can put it manually. So let's uh, let's take this rebar. So we can connect that rebar group. And we can play now with the, you can see that this is not linked with any this parametric model. So we have this different. And we can play with the part, with the shape, with the attributes, and so on. We can even go to right click and change the number of control points. So for example, for 20, uh, 10, and so on. So we can change that. If we would like to change the shape, why not? Uh, uh, there is a one component called expand object. Uh, so we can get some data uh, uh, about that one. And here is the thing that with the polygon, we can get the polygon of this, this, this distribution. So let's expand that. And we have max uh, polygon points uh, we have here. So let's uh, again expand this uh, polygon points. Oh, or maybe just points. So we have X, Y, and Z. Okay, looks good. And now let's construct our point. So point construct. Uh, let me see. I cannot find it. Construct. Construct. Okay, I will just do it manually. So vector point construct. I don't know what's why it's not finding. Okay, so we are going to construct this point. Let's zoom it. So we have the same, uh, as you can see, the same distribution of the shape. Uh, we have some data tree. Uh, so let's uh, shift that. Uh, so it will be uh, in the correct data order. So we can see that we have 31s and 31s. And now uh, let's play a little bit with that one. So we can make it a interpolate, uh, interpolate curve. So we can create our curve. So we will have two curves. So first and the second one. And let's change the shape of this, uh, this curve. So for example, we can extend. Uh, so make it, make it bigger or make it smaller. Or maybe we can add also reinforcement. Let's in this case just extend. Uh, 1,000 uh, both sides, 
here. Uh, you can see that is a straight at the end, and this is because of the type. So let's go to smooth or arc uh, in this case. And we can use that one, uh, this particular case for uh, to go. And maybe in ca some cases we have to also rebuild. I always like to rebuild uh, the curve between before connecting that and just connect it to shape without uh, grafting. So let's see. And we have changed our edit. We have added new point. So in this way, maybe I will come back. So you can see that we have changed the shape of the existing rebar. So imagine that you have hundreds of existing rebar that you would like to just add or extend without going much into the data, just, uh, just uh, changing the shape. So yeah, it's possible. And here, just changing the number of points, let's say 20, maybe 30. Cool. I, I hope that Martin uh, uh, helps you. Uh, all right. Uh, so two more things before we'll go to Q&A session. Uh, I already showed that get rebar polygons. I already showed that with uh, checking the clashes. Uh, it's really nice uh, feature. And it all really opens new possibilities of checking the clashes, may maybe changing the shape of the rebar and connecting that and sending, or maybe just changing the group of rebar in the single rebars. So, or or maybe as in, in this example, creating uh, 99 shapes code, like not standard shape code that you have to go from one arc into straight line and then into another straight line. In some cases, it's really difficult to do it in manually in uh, Tecla. So with Grasshopper, it's not a problem. And one of the last things that I would like to mention is that uh, uh, Sebastian have been working a lot uh, lately for the rebar sets that can be done with uh, Grasshopper. And in the new edition that will come together with Tecla 2024, it will be available rebar sets. So rebar sets are coming. So it will be available. It will be possible to create rebar sets through Grasshopper in Tecla. And we have new components, surface attributes and guideline attributes. The principles are exactly the same. You are uh, finding your surface. You are finding your guidelines, and then setting up for a reinforcement. I will looking forward to test it. It's not uh, officially available. But when it will be, uh, so I will be happy to test that and show it. So just if you are wondering if you would like to skip to make it Grasshopper. So yeah, this connection is developing every single uh, day and getting new new components. So it's really uh, worth to setting into uh, Grasshopper because rebar sets are coming in the new release. In the future, are also coming with the bolts. So there is less and less limitation in the uh, this connection. So at the end, what do you think about using Grasshopper for rebars in Tecla? Just write in your comment if you like this automatization of uh, rebars in uh, Grasshopper. How do you feel? Uh, have I uh, have I showed a good examples for you, or maybe you would like to have more examples? I'm still I'm having uh, 12 minutes more. As of your time, so I will be glad to ask your uh, answer your questions. So, what do you think? Uh, just write on the comments if you are on the LinkedIn or if you are on the YouTube. Uh, so, just write what do you think about this Grasshopper and Tecla uh, connection for rebars? Uh, let me see. I will mark some questions. This is a game changing. Love this workflow. Yeah, I have the same uh, opinion uh, uh, as you. I cannot imagine uh, now working without Grasshopper. Of course, sometimes it's easier to just model one uh, rebar. But if we are talking about automation, the repetitive tag, this is the best way to go. Ayesha looks promising. Yeah, you should try it uh, uh, tomorrow. You will get all the Grasshopper files so you can test it by yourself. Uh, hi, Chris. Thanks for giving this class. Can you please send this file uh, for our revision? Yes, tomorrow you will get uh, the file. So this is not, not, not a problem. 
let me see martin uh, how can we edit oh, okay i already answer answered that uh, let me see uh, homework you will get also homework i will not let you without any assignments uh, so in this case you will have you will going to create more tape red reinforcement so here on the top longitudinal bar with the tape red form uh, some bars at the end on the edges so here we'll, i'm going to prepare you a template uh, you are going to get maybe i can uh, just show uh, we put a lot of effort into preparing this uh, template let me see i will open that one and let me see live here reinforcement bonus materials and uh, template for uh, reinforcement homework so here is a file uh, with everything every data setup you have the step one step two uh, you have to go with the tecla input so maybe you can use reuse the same uh, as it was uh, from the start let me see data tree so we can just copy the input so you will have the same uh, so just go go to homework uh, so you will create the same as it was on the start on the on the beam so everyone i will save it so everyone will start make the same uh, start and then you have also uh, we made the um, drawings what which reinforcement you would like to model so take a look closer look you can choose the size uh, the shape of the curves you can go to the cross reinforcement and the range and so on and at the end you will get the pi reinforcement and so today workshop for everyone who will register uh, for that one even if you are watching that uh, uh, later on if you will register this uh, website will be still open and if you will register you will get all the materials on your email box and the good news is that uh, in march we have already planned for new webinar this time workshop sorry this time uh, i will have a, a guest and we're going to talk about custom components actually it will be grasshopper components how we can build components with use of uh, grasshopper and i will have a guest um tautovidas bakas from doca usa he worked there as a beam coordinator and he really used a lot of grasshopper component for creating um not only formworks but really cool ways uh, of creating elements connections and custom components with grasshopper so you can already register at uh, let me see i will just show you learngrasshopper.com slash workshop slash tecla slash component and hope to see you there uh, for the next one really uh it will we are promising also new files also how to start with tecla grasshopper components we promise a good a lot of good con content and give you the best start in grasshopper and tecla and that's it uh, so i'm looking forward to meet tautovidas uh, in the next month uh, but now let's go to q a session maybe we have some more uh, questions i will just take a coffee still 10 minutes left i'm here for you if i forget you can just repeat your question because maybe sometimes i can just miss your uh, question so maybe i can answer that one uh, martin do you have uh, do you have must have grasshopper packages to ensure connection with tecla and also for extend grasshopper uh, possibilities uh, must have grasshopper packages hmm uh, for me it's just meta hopper uh, pufferfish uh, this is the packages that I'm uh, I'm using. What else I can uh, recommend? Must have um, uh, human uh, UI for my, for me uh, and lunchbox. I think these ones are the most crucial. So lunchbox, human, uh, meta hopper, and maybe also L front. All right. Um, let me see congratulations chris full knowledge of the subject and familiarity with the software excellent presentation thank you very much ayesha great session thank you awesome demo chris open many new possibilities thanks 
just test, do your homework, send me results. I will be happy to see. Um, let me see. Uh, great work question. IFC exports from Rhino. Revit has libraries mapped with the IFC parameters. In Rhino, it can be done with Geometry Gym or Visual Arc, but have, have to define manually with each element. Yeah. Um, maybe there is some, uh, some automation in that, but... I hope that right now inside Revit is going to uh, develop uh, develop some libraries that we can export with the automatically uh, all the parameters without any mapping. So I hope it will be uh, soon in uh, right now inside Revit. Uh, Aksana, wonderful presentation. Thank you, Aksana. I will check that with uh, C Sharp because it's really interesting. Uh, let me see. Uh, question: Arches in Tecla. I struggle with complex arches. I mean, and creating reinforcement in the arch. Okay, uh, let's play a little bit with that one. I have my file open with the curved bars. Uh, let me see. Groups of slabs. Uh, offset. Let me see here. Uh, tunnel reinforcement. Maybe I can just go to circular bars. So I can show a little bit here. Just let me know if I can just zoom it. Uh, create a view. Let me see. Um, OK, so we have the reinforcement. OK, so now you can see that we have uh, created re reinforcement. And again, here the things is are like dividing the curves correctly. So we have the segments. So let's zoom it. Uh, as in this case, we are going to create the curve reinforcement uh, starting shape and uh, uh, our closing shape. Let me see, I will just do like that. So we are talking about the curved reinforcement and then we are dividing our, uh, our start and ending curve and creating a lines. So lines perpendicular and then we are creating the points so we can connect all of them into the curve. So this will be our representation. And the thing is that, of course, you can send all of this data in directly into Gra uh, Tecla. So let's say that we are going to create the shapes. So you will see that we have many points defined by that. But actually, you can you need just first the, and, the last, uh, and the last point. And here's the thing. Uh, you have to rebuild your curve, so you will have the same number of points of definition. This can be a really issue, but sometimes you can also uh, divide this curve, divide curve by number of points. So remember that if shape, it doesn't have to be a planar curve, okay? This is not an issue. It can be a point and Tecla will create by themselves. So if you are going to maybe rebuild that and then you can divide it, so at the end you can just... Uh, it's not what I'm, I've been exec, expecting. Let's uh, interpolate the data. Uh, interpolate the data again, and let's use the curves. Mm. OK, so we have the curve. OK, we're just taking the first uh, and the last one, the curves, OK, connecting to and here. So sometimes you have to divide this curve and make it uh, make it nicer. And always is the matter of the lines. And uh, just remember about one thing that if you do not have arc, uh, sometimes you have to change it. You have to, in this case, we have the arc line curve. But if you have the curve, so maybe it's wiser to divide it, uh, divide into segment into different uh, curves. So let me see, maybe I have some example. Mm, not not this one. Yeah, for example, here I have the shutter uh, component. So in this case, we have the circle. So we have divided that for too many segments. So we will see that we have uh, different segments with the list. So sometimes one curve needs to be divided into several arches. I hope it's uh, it will be easier. Uh, super workflow, thank you. Great workshop. Uh, I'm really happy that you like it. I put a lot of effort to prepare these materials. I get 404 package not fund for the workshop Tecla component. 
Uh, okay, yeah, uh, sorry uh, for that. Uh, I will um, I will send it this information about the registration. Maybe it's still not uh, not opened. So I, uh, sorry for that, but you will if you register for this workshop, so uh, you will get uh, invitation for the next one. No worries. Uh, how will we make a spiral uh, reinforcement on there? Uh, spiral reinforcement. So let's uh, we are in the circular here. Uh, so let's uh, let's use that one. This example. Let me see. Um, let's create this uh, this one, and let's zoom that. Uh, right click and just create a view. Okay, so we have the reinforcement, so we can see, let's see, this is the rebar, circular rebar. We can delete this one. And we would like to change this circular rebar. So this is our definition. Uh, in Rhino, uh, we can see that this is our range and our shape, it will be our curve. So this is our uh, circular. So if we would like to have a spiral reinforcement, so we have a circle and then the range. But here is the thing. Uh, when we look on this example, so we can see that if we double, double click on that reinforcement, we can see the circular rebar. If we like to change it to a spiral, so here on the group, I don't know why, is, why this is here, but Sebastian placed it here. We have to change it with toggle, mm, boolean toggle into true. So let's connect to true and spiral. Uh, so this is supposed to be a spiral right now, and you can see this is a rebar group type spiral. So this is it. It's really easy. Uh, I'm working mostly with precast and concrete structures in Tecla, houses, offices, public uh, buildings. No any infrastructure projects. I'm wondering if Grasshopper would be a helpful in many case building. I'm planning to do a separate workshop, uh, which I know, I'm not sure which one, about uh, creating how to use Grasshopper in, prefab, in the prefab and for houses. So yeah, stay tuned, stay on my list, and I will inform that there's lots of use cases on that. Uh, last question, I will take last two questions. Uh, is the rebar work with a curve SP line, 3D dimensional curve, or do we need to divide it first into planar curves? Mm, yeah, we can. You can create a rebar if it's not. If this is not a arc, you can just create it. Uh, you can just have some problems with the shape at the end, uh, but maybe this is not the issue for you. But if you have lots of points, you can just follow a uh, NERP curves with lots of really weird uh, geometry. Uh, so yeah, this is not a not, a, not an issue. It doesn't have to be planar if this is your uh, question. Uh, Einar. A great uh, content as always, Chris. Thank you. Could you elaborate on rebar in varying cross section? Let's say stirrups in a beam with varying heights. Mm, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's create something. Mm, let's create something. Uh, okay, let's go to perspective, or maybe to top view. Uh, let's create. I will be the last example for today. Um, let me see. I will just create a start point zero zero zero. So we are here. Uh, let's uh, create something uh, interesting. Uh, so let's create maybe some profile uh, going with the one dimensions. Let me see here. And with the perspective, uh, we can uh, maybe copy that one. Uh, so let's move it. Uh, let's uh, change the cross section and let's the loft lose the loft between uh, these two curves. Set multiple. We have the our loft. Let's cap it. Cap holes. We have the B wrap. And now let's connect that really fast with item uh, just uh, to geometry. Okay. Let's see our Tecla uh, model. Mm, let's uh, zoom that. Zoom. And let's get uh, create a view, 3D view. Okay, we have the profiles, and let's create some uh, rebars. Maybe, uh, as you said, you would like to have uh, two different rebars with the tapered form. Uh, I will elaborate on that. So I will take the first uh, shape of the stirrup and the second second shape of the stirrup, 
and let's create a rebar rebar group we have a part that's cool we have a shape so we are going to graft it we are going to give to tecla you you will need to create from this shape into the shape of the small one so here we will see that we have the really nice stirrups at the uh, at the end of course we have the curves so if you right click on that one and if you go to part so we will see that we have created uh, no, it's not the reinforcement inquiry so we have the shape 19 in this uh, case and we have the different legs for every single rebar so it's kind of delta and you can get all the information from that one uh, i really recommend to go to property get property and so we have get a tecla object and we get the name so for example we can for example get the cc uh, exact uh, and if we are going to name that so we can get exact information in Tecla about the reinforcement. And the same with can be uh, lots of an another data that is inside it. And we can take this into Grasshopper. So uh, Einar, I hope that it helps you. The same with the length. I think if we are going to take the length. I'm not sure. Yeah. So here you will see the total uh, length of uh, or the uh, or the rebars, but you can also specify for single uh, reinforcement. Okay, cool. That's all for today. Uh, I will also send you information. Sorry, this ring is not working, but I send you information for the next uh, lots of contact uh, con uh, content uh, workshop. That's it for for today. Thank you for all the amazing questions and. Have a good Valentine's Day, and I'm really appreciate that you spent this one and a half hour with me. So now take your time with the closest with your family, and see you in the next one. Bye.